guys, it's Tiffany. Today, we're going to work with the quadratic formula. Solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Some things to keep in mind. When you are solving a quadratic equation, your goal is to calculate what x equals in that equation. You need to make sure that you start with an equation that is listed in standard form, which looks like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The quadratic formula that you will use to solve the equation looks like this. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by graphing the original equation to see where it hits the X axis. Let's take a look at example number one. The first thing you want to do is write down your quadratic formula. Now you want to make sure you identify each term. I have an A term here, a B term here, and a C term here. I need to plug in all of these pieces into my quadratic formula. So I'm gonna clarify, A is nine, B is 12, and C is four. I do wanna point out that if your sign that's in front of any of these terms is a minus sign, you need to write down a negative whatever that number is, okay? You can't write it down as positive. So if this plus sign here that's in front of the 12 were a minus sign. Instead of writing a positive 12 over here for my B value, I would have written negative 12. That's very important. Now, I'm gonna use these letters, the A value, B value, and C value, and plug them in to my quadratic formula. So that's gonna look like X equals negative B, and remember B is 12, I wrote it over there to the left. So we're just gonna write 12 plus or minus the square root of b again, so I'm right 12 again, and that has to be squared, and then you minus four, that just remains four for any problem, and then your a is gonna go next, and you're multiplying. So I like to clarify that by putting whatever my a value is inside parentheses, so a is nine in this case, and then you need to multiply it by your c value, so I'm gonna use parentheses again and write four. Now all of this, is over 2a, so two down below and a would be nine. Now I'm gonna start off by simplifying everything that's under my radical and multiplying my denominator. Let's rewrite this again. X equals negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 to the second power is 144 minus four times nine times four is also 144. Now I'm gonna put all of that over 18 because two times nine is 18. Now under my radical, this is gonna end up being really nice because 144 minus 144 is actually zero. So that's just gonna drop off and I'm gonna be left with X equals negative 12 over 18. The reason this particular problem results in having everything under the radical turn to zero and then just falling away is because this particular equation has the base of a perfect square trinomial underneath. If you look at this, you can see that if you had to factor this problem, you're really dealing with a perfect square trinomial. So what ends up happening is things are gonna cancel out a little easier, okay? So once I get my answer, what I like to do is check it to see if, if I got the right answer. So I might graph it, or you could even plug in your X value back into the original equation to make sure you get a true statement. But let's say we graph it in our calculator. You're gonna get something that looks like this. Now this particular graph has an axis that lists every half point, okay? So we have our zero or origin here, and then we have a place where X is equal to negative 0.5 and then we have where x is equal to 1. So I want to point out that from here to here is one full space. This center mark is the halfway mark. So if we realize that our answer needs to be x equals negative 12 over 18, I want you to understand that that's a little bit less than negative a half, okay? If this were a half with the denominator of 18, it would be 
negative 9 over 18, and then that was simplified to negative 1 half. Well, our problem is negative 12 over 18, so that means it's a little bit past the negative 9 18s mark. So the negative 9 18s mark would be right here at that halfway mark because negative 9 18s is like a different way of saying negative 0 0.5. So what this point is, is your negative 12 18s mark. And so by looking at this graph visually, I can see that my answer makes sense. Now let's take a look at example number two. Example number two, we're gonna solve for X again. So again, I'm gonna start by writing the quadratic formula and I'm gonna identify the points. I'm gonna identify my A, B, and C values. So I have A here, B here, and C here. For B, I can see that there is no coefficient in front of the X. So that means my B value is gonna be one. Remember, when you have no coefficient in front of a variable, there's an understood one there and you don't have to write that one. So it's just something that you need to note. It's sort of like whenever you write a whole number, there's also a decimal zero behind it, but you don't have to write that. So it's the same concept. It's always there, but you just need to understand that it may not be written. So my A value equals three, my B value equals one, and my C value equals negative two. Remember, I explained that you do need to check for the sign. So for this particular example, we have a negative, so we need to carry that over in our letter. Now I need to plug these values into the quadratic formula. I have X equals negative B, which is negative one, plus or minus the square root of B, one again, squared minus four let's see what a is three and then c is that negative two and again i like to clarify that i'm multiplying here by using parentheses around all of those now i'm going to draw a line and now i'm just going to write everything that goes in my denominator so two times three would be my denominator right here so now i have x equals negative one plus or minus the square root of everything that's under this radical, but let's see if I can simplify it at once. Four times three is 12. 12 times negative two is negative 24. One times one over here, which is the first thing that's under my radical, is just one, so I'm left with one. So that leaves me with the square root of one minus negative 24, which is the same thing as one plus 24. Remember, two negatives together are gonna make a positive. So that ends up being the square root of 25. So luckily, that's a super easy problem because it's a perfect square. So now I draw my line again and put everything that should be in the denominator down, but in a multiplied form. So two times three is six. Now I need to simplify all of this again, and it's gonna look like negative one plus or minus five all over six. Now this is two separate problems because this plus or minus symbol is telling us to take this thing two separate ways. So that's what I'm referring to right here. This is telling me that they want me to solve the problem one time as x equals negative one plus five over six. And they also want me to solve the problem as x equals negative one minus five over six. I'm gonna do that. So negative one plus the five would give me a positive four and my denominator would be six. So when I take this route and consider the plus from the plus or minus symbol, I get X equals two thirds. Now I need to do the same, but consider the minus sign from the plus or minus symbol. When I do that, I have negative one minus five and that equals negative six, and that's over six. And then that equals negative one. So what this is saying is X can also equal negative one. So now if I wanna check to see if my answers are correct, I could graph this on a graphing calculator or make a table and make sure that I have a place where Y equals zero so that I can see what X would equal at that point. So basically what that means is we're looking for the places where the graph hits the x-axis. So that would be 
right here and that looks like at the point where x equals negative one which is exactly what i have right here perfect and the other one is over here now this one's a little awkward because it's not quite on an intersection it's not at the point where x equals one is less than that but it also looks like it's a little bit more than where x equals a half so two-thirds looks dead on as to where this graph is hitting the x-axis so it looks like my answer is correct now let's take a recap when you are solving a quadratic equation your goal is to calculate what x equals in that equation you need to make sure you first start with an equation that is listed in standard form, which looks like this. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. The quadratic formula that you will use to solve the equation looks like this. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by graphing the original equation to see where it hits the x-axis. Now you try. Comment with the correct answer below. Then head over to my website and click on video answers to see if your answer is correct. Solve this equation using the quadratic formula. 25x squared minus 10x plus one equals zero. Supereasymath.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.